the Leopard 50 has officially ruined me. As someone who's maybe only months away from purchasing a much smaller catamaran, spending so much time on this boat has had the effect of making every other boat I get on feel so small. But nevertheless, it's been a privilege to see such an extraordinary boat come together the way that it has. Anyways, in this episode, we're going to hear from Steven about how they plan to put a hole in this boat below the waterline with the diver and the toilet plunger. We'll also see the mask get put up and hear about the dual 48 volt and 12 volt systems, among a few other things. Finding the sweet spot for these videos between getting too technical or being too brief has proven to be more difficult than I thought it would be. In this video, I'm cutting out quite a bit of the technical speak that Andre gets into about these boat systems. If you guys want to know more or get more technical, please leave a comment below. So we're getting ready to poke a hole in the boat with the diver. Diver's in the water right now. He's gonna go double check our location for a through hole fitting for the air conditioning system. So we're gonna drill a hole for a one inch through hole fitting with a hole saw. He is gonna be holding a toilet plunger, of all things, over the hole as a seal so that when we drill through, the water doesn't come up too fast. And then we have a top seal that we're gonna put in place once we've completed drilling the hole. And then we're gonna hand him a 5200 gooped up through hole fitting that he's gonna swim down and punch up through the hole and it has a bung in it so it won't let any water come through and then it's up to us from the inside to screw down the fitting. Thank you. Might want to rinse that. Too much for the through hole thing to screw all the way down on. We did end up wanting to add some items to the mast, or several items to the mast. But one of the things we did have to do to run the conduit is this mast has pre-bend in it, so all these diamond wires here are super tight. See, we've backed them off a fair bit to let the rig go straight so we could run the new conduit through the mast. And right over here, unfortunately, we don't have it back yet, so I can't show you, but we'll show you later. We have an anodized bracket that's gonna be going on the mast here. We had to custom make it, so that's currently at anodizing, and that is for a forward facing, forward and down facing camera that's gonna go on the rig here. So right here we have the new radar that we added as well as the pointing cell antenna. We have the horn, the radar, and the cell antenna all going in here. One other kind of cool addition right here is we added a low friction ring on the spreader roughly midway. And what this does is this is the lazy jack that's led through it. So now the lazy jacks make more of a wider basket for when you're hoisting the main so your battens don't get caught in the jacks as you're coming up. You still have to keep the boat into the wind, but not quite as accurately. Because of the curve on the spreader, we did have to make a custom mounting bracket for this antenna. Otherwise it wouldn't make really good contact. The antenna stand up perfectly straight. So at the masthead, again, more conduit needed. We upgraded the stock VHF antenna cable to RG213 from RG58. So a much heavier duty cable. You can see this is the original and this is the new. So much, much less signal loss potential. And then of course we do have the wind instrument and a new tricolor mast headlight which is gonna be this right here, this uh, Wings and Plath OGM, aluminum body sealed LED unit. Very, very high quality. We really like these lights. upgrade we did is we installed a swivel at the termination of the two to one for the code zero halyard as well as the main halyard so right here we have one and what this does is it can't spin right now just because of the stand but it allows that annoying twist that gets trapped in the static leg of the main halyard to come out when it's as it's being hoisted up so you don't get that line twisting around itself as it goes with the mass so a nice simple low cost upgrade that makes a huge difference Stainless 
frame is mounted on the boat for the solar panels and it also doubles as a leg for the stern shower. So you can get out of the water from snorkeling, stand right here, take a nice shower using as much water as you want because we have a nice water maker on board. Hyundai 400 watt bifacial panels. I was very excited to see the total output of this four kilowatt system once we get done. All right, so let's go check on Frank, making some cabinetry, making some noise. Okay, so uh, this client requested addition of a few cabinets in their new Leopard. So what we've done is we've uh, tried to make it look factory original. Uh, one of the places they wanted another cabinet was right here. Obviously just a missed opportunity to have this be one uh, size larger. So what I've done is I've made various templates to make it fit in there and I prefab the whole thing uh, in our fab shop and now I'm getting ready to drop it in. And I'll relocate the light switches up a little higher. If I've done a good job, it should just drop right in. Like so. So this will get secured here and then against this wall here. Was added, this was added. This was added and this was added. Before, this was a vanity and you would sit here and you'd have your feet up under it. But what I've done now is frame this out so that we can now add in a drawer here and a drawer here. Okay, and then we've actually left this section here because it'll be a nice spot to put your phone and we might put a charger right here as well. All right, so Mike is uh, running wiring for underwater lights, right? Mounting um, the controller or? The controller, the switch, the uh, fuse block, everything's back in there. Cool. Here. We have the controller for the underwater lights, so those are wirelessly controllable in terms of light, color sequence, and intensity. All right, let's go find Andre. Programming the uh, thermodynamica. This is Maurizio, the uh, head technician for uh, thermodynamica, uh, commissioning the system here. You're right. What's that box exactly? It's just the control box for this air handler. So there's one main central uh, air compressor. It delivers refrigerant to each of the air handlers, and this is the control box for this air handler. We'd put an air handler in every room. Sure. But for somebody like this customer, where 95% of the time they're going to be here and there, yeah. we kind of came up with an alternative plan that was a little bit more cost effective, but very functional. So. And very efficient. And very efficient. And what, exactly. 2800 yeah. watts, right? That's what we're, 20, we're well, thinking at full blast. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, and you can dial that back down to. Uh, the lowest it'll go is 700 watts. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a little over a third of the draw of the typical 16,000 BTU system. Yeah. And we've got the feed lines from the main battery bank up here that we added. These two switches here are for the two inverter banks. So we're using distributors as kind of bus bars to feed the uh, multiple inverters that we have. And these are the service switches. And on the back here we have, there's actually another MPPT over here, but these are gonna be the 12 volt MPPT. We have a transfer system on this boat. The entire arch on the back can be transferred between the 12 and the 24. So these are the 12 volt MPPTs. But we're gonna cut an opening here so that the uh, customer will have access to these switches. And these are to shut off the solar arrays. But we have all of the 48 volt MPPTs up here. He can charge either his 12 volt bank or his 48 volt bank. He can choose and say, hey, right now I want to use solar to charge my 12 volt bank, or nope, I want to, I want to charge my 48 volt that, bank. That's, that's right. That's flip of a switch. Exactly, or yeah. he can do nothing at all and let the 48 volt system run itself, but sure. as a backup, like let's say the, the BMS decides to shut itself down or there's sure. a problem with it, it he can transfer boot over the 12 volt, charge 12 volt, there's a 12 volt inverter there, so he's got very Basically redundant, redundant systems. systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of backups on this boat. 10,000 watt on the 120 volt side. And this is 15 kilowatt or 15,000 watts on the 230 volt side. One of the main reasons we went with a 120 volt a water maker right. so that he can do it from the 48 volt or the 12 volt. Right. A quick water maker and air conditioning update for the cooling. Huh. And then the three quarter right here, this is for the water maker. And we did have that very exciting oh through hole install that is now all hooked up, <laughs> nicely dried in. And here we have the pre-filters for the water maker system. There's a charcoal filter that's actually for the fresh water wash down and then two pre-filters to protect the pump. And then we have the membranes mounted in a custom anodized aluminum bracket. They're awesome. and. They actually make an adapter that we have, they're not in right now, uh, but it's a flush adapter, so you can hook a hose right up to this top cap and flush out your system, back flush it just using a water pressure. And they're also super easy to clean, really robust, uh, just awesome strainers all around. Neil's gonna be able to reach in here and fire on the system, and Seawater Pro actually has a really cool, unique system that you don't have to back off your pressure on your pressure valve when you start the system up. 
because they have a, a spring relief, pressure relief there, so the water hammer doesn't damage the system. A lot of other systems, you have to back off the pressure when you start them up and then slowly bring them up to pressure. But Seawater Pro does not. And so right here is going to be the TDS meter so that Neil can monitor the quality of the water that's going to his tanks and also flow so you can see what's going on. And then these are just indicators of your pressure. So the pressure at the boost pump and then the main pressure. So this tells you if your filters are clogged and this tells you actually what, what pressure you're operating at. Somewhere in here, I don't know if he's done installing, but a manifold system so that he can select to flush water directly overboard if he's unhappy with the quality of it or wait until it's at the quality he wants and then divert it and it will go to his tanks. And then another diversion line will be from that so that he can get some water into a bucket for when he wants to pickle the system. So you do need to be able to separate and have some pure RO water if you want to pickle the system. And we'll cover that in more depth when we do a complete water maker overview video.